Welcome to Club Innovators, presented by Capstone Hospitality. Join us as we explore the minds of industry trailblazers shaping the future of private clubs. I'm Kyle Bradburn, your host, and with me today are two special guests. We have Greg Rotzel, who is the VP of Sales for Capstone Hospitality, and Adam Murkison, tough last name to say all the time, uh, who is the Director of Training. So gentlemen, welcome onto the show. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Greg, great to be here. Good to see you, man. Yep. So today we're going to talk about training. Um, so Adam, you are the director of training. So I, you know, a lot of this is going to be geared towards you, but I know Greg, you have a lot of great input because after they go from training, uh, they go out into the field and you deal with them quite a bit. So we, we not only have training on the front end, we have that ongoing training that we see, uh, every day, month to month, year to year. So Adam, could you kind of just talk about, you know, how training uh, starts in the capstone hospitality kind of main office there, uh, you know, what goes on, what's the foundation of training and we'll start to build from there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I think that's a good point. You brought up that like training does extend far beyond headquarters in the classroom. It's much more hands-on and experiential. And then it does extend to once these new employees get placed on site. Um, but going back to how it starts, it starts with the basics, right? Some folks coming in have sales experience, others don't. So we always want to start at the basics and use a scaffolding approach to help build upon those foundations and move up into more complex sales scenarios, conversations, and outcomes that they're going to see in the real world. So we do it structured. It's very uh, methodical how we lay it out. And ultimately, our goal is to, by the time they get to Greg, they're ready to roll. And then it's just fine tuning and tweaking on, on Greg part or anybody else on the club from Capstone's representation. Yeah. So I'm going to go like super high level with this and you don't have to get in the weeds yet with it, but are there a handful of key aspects that you know they need to be proficient in before they, or yes, before they leave the building? So obviously we're going to go in depth here, but what are the things you need to know that, you know, the boxes they have to check before they leave and they get out on their own? Yeah, I think it's a couple things, right? There's the intangibles and there's the tangible skills that we, we try to, you know, hone and fine tune. Um, I think one of our mentalities in terms of hiring is we hire for the intangibles and then we can teach the skills. So we want somebody coming in with those intangibles, the hard work, dedication, competitive, critical thinking skills, intrinsically motivated, right? And then what we do is we train sales specific skills, all the sales scenarios you're gonna interact with. We have a, a high level data collection CMR that helps us understand, helps the client understand. Um, client relations is huge in this role. Um, and then lead generation, right? This is a role in which you very much have to generate your own leads most of the time. So we kind of break it down into four major buckets. And then within there are sub skills that we want, really want people to, once they leave training, to have a good grasp on. Yeah, absolutely. And that makes right perfect sense. Ultimately, you have to have the bigger buckets that everything falls into. And then you're going to filter that down and teach those different skills. So when they come in, how do you structure this training? Is it you know, you as someone one on one all the time, are they doing different things? Are they hanging out with different people on the corporate team? Are they going out in the world? You know, how does this work? Yeah, all of that. Um, so initially, <laughs> yeah, it's typically just usually they're very small classrooms. So it's small group learning. Um, so sometimes it's one on one. Sometimes it's me and just the new employee. Sometimes it's two on one, but typically won't get over three. So you get really, really in depth uh, and personalized learning styles. And that's how it starts. For me, it's better for me to understand how they learn, what they need to learn. And then from there, again, right, we have basics, we have metrics we need to hit. But I really try to individualize what each person needs um, before they leave training. And then, right, then they move out into the world. They start interacting with our sales directors, get some more experiential training, hands-on experience. Um, and then by the time they get to Greg, they should have seen most of the things they're going to interact with. Yeah. So let's get down in the weeds a little bit. All right. How exactly is that program structured? Ask me another way. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I go in, what would I have to expect from that training? Right. If I walk in day one, mm -hmm. exactly how am I training? Like, what are the specific platforms that I'm using in dealing with all this training? Yeah. So we got a couple of ways. We've got uh, an LMS system that's an online um, supplement to face-to-face -to -face training, right? That's some of the modules. That's where you're going to learn a lot of the history of Capstone, our basic ways of doing things, sales basics. So we really can supplement the face-to-face -face, um, with that online learning platform. Then it's you and I as the employee working together to, again, take you through the basics. What do you need to learn? Connecting it back to your past experiences. 
And then I start to bring in other employees of ours that are local. Um, and then you actually get on real calls with real prospects to some of our client clubs um, to really start to generate that those reps and those skills when you're interacting with clients uh, in real time. So how important is it to get on real calls, obviously, before you're on site? Like, is that is that a must? You know, yeah. do I need to talk to people, if, you know, before I'm out there? Is that a huge part of training, a small part of it? Where does that land? Yeah, I don't want to say it's all of it because there's all these other components to it. But um, it's like anything, right? We tend to hire a lot of golfers. So if I were to equate it to, right, the golf world, it's being on the driving range with your swing coach behind you, right? So I'm sitting there kind of providing a template and some scaffolding for these folks to get on these calls, potentially, right, for the first time in a sales career for them. Now, other people come through and have done this thousands of times. So it's just yeah. like, hey, here's what we typically say in this role with Capstone that we have found to work. Um, but it's major. Yeah. It gives them the ability in real time to interact with the prospect and, and get and break away from this like academic and intellectual component of the training and actually get their hands on it. And that's when they see how far they need to go if they actually do enjoy it. Um, and what their skill set is. Yeah. I, I love the idea of you sitting there coaching them while they're on the phone. I know it's not literally that, but in my mind, it's fun to think of you sitting right behind them just coaching them as they're going through every phone call physically um, and emotionally. Yeah. I'm right behind them. <laughs> so how does that go? Right. All right. I'm you're, you're training Kyle. I'm on the mm -hmm. phone. Uh, you know, I call a prospect, I go through, you know, maybe I'm good at some things. I'm not so good at some things. I hang up the phone. How does that feedback go at the, in that moment? Yeah. So we've actually got a really cool system that allows us to, um, depending on the state, right. We have to watch regulations, but we can record some of these calls. If we let that client know that, Hey, this call may oh, be wow. recorded. So we can go back, hit replay, and we can together listen to it, right? So I have found it to be helpful for, for two ways. One of which is I ask them, you know, based on all the fundamentals and things we've talked about, walk me through what you think just happened and how it went and what you maybe do, do differently, what you liked about it, right? I want them to go through that process of critically thinking and being able to examine their own call. Because again, right, this, you're going to be in an office by yourself when you get out on site. You're going to have to be able to do that. Um, so again, it's like playing a round of golf. You have to be able to diagnose your swing if it's off a little bit and get yourself back on track. And then I will add my input to what I saw and how I'd like to, the calls to move forward. I love that. Right. Tell me, tell me how you did. And then I'm going to tell you how you did. Right. So a little bit of let's yeah, make sure narratives. this matches up here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so before we hopped on the call, we were chatting a little bit and, uh, one of the things you guys mentioned you did was role playing. How does that even work? You know, what, what are you guys specifically role playing when it, when it comes to membership sales at a private club? Yeah. So role play is like a precursor to real life calls, right? This is even a more structured environment to make mistakes, to want to pause for a second, to think about what you want to say. So again, role playing can be uncomfortable and awkward for folks. No one truly loves it, but it just provides a really great space to learn the basics, right? So what we're role playing are typically the introductory call, right? Hi, this is Adam Klein from XYZ Club, asking specific questions that we have found to bring out like the information we need on our side. So we, again, it's very basic. And then again, they gain in complexity based on that person's skill level, their experience, and we just ramp it up to they're giving tours, they're on the phone with, with real clients. Um, again, all geared towards by the time they get on site and they're there to make money and they're there to be successful, they've experienced all of this stuff already. Yeah. You know, and, and Greg, I'm going to kind of throw this one over to you and kind of build off that. You know, how important is it for training to incorporate these real world scenarios and challenges that membership directors may encounter when they're at the club? I mean, you you have to get into these real world scenarios right away, right? Because these are conversations when they're getting on calls with prospects, they're going to be having these types of conversations instantly. Um, so being able to, to role play and, and work through that with, with Adam or with somebody else on the corporate team there in training, it is incredibly important. Um, and it just, it, it gets all of our salespeople to the place that they need to be quicker, right? When you're attacking it this way, uh, it's just going to move people through the process. If you are not, if you are not conducting these role plays, if you're not getting the salespeople uh, on on these live calls, it, it's just going to stay stagnant, right? And you need to be able to push people through that process. And, and the salespeople also have to be able to push through the process and understand, all right, this is what I'm doing wrong here. This is what I can change. 
this is what I can get better at. Um, and, and just kind of updating and editing what their process is, what their conversations are like as well. Um, yeah. In my experience, when I first started in a membership sales director role, role plays and just just getting on calls. I mean, it, there's there's really nothing more valuable than that because you're going to start hearing all these different types of questions from prospects. You're you're just gonna you're gonna get the mindset that you need to have much quicker when you are doing those things. Um, so yeah. I, to me, I mean, it's one of the top three most important things that you can do within training. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think no matter how much experience you have, it's still a little nerve wracking the first time you do it. You know, you can be a guy that's super outgoing like myself. You can be a guy that's, you know, uh, maybe a little more, you know, laid back and not as chatty. And it's, you know, for everybody, it's a struggle the first time. Mm -hmm. We know in America, the biggest fear of Americans is public speaking. And while I get this isn't quite public speaking in front of a thousand people, calling a stranger on the phone can be a little intimidating. So I think the idea that, that you guys are talking about is get these practice reps in and and get those in a you know a handful of times before you're out there doing the real thing because you can only get better the more you do something. We all know that. So so Greg and, and Adam both, uh, you know, it's such a dynamic field. You know, how do you ensure that these sales directors continue to learn and develop their skills beyond the initial training? You know, what if they're out in the field? And, you know, it's real easy, right? And, and I think we've seen this in the first 30 to 90 days. They're excited to be out there. They're killing it, you know, and then sometimes there's a little bit of drop off on there. How's that kind of that extended learning going on? And how do you guys structure that with sales reps? Yeah, I can, I can definitely speak to that. Yeah. Um, cause at that point, Adam and, and the directors of training really pass that on to the managers or regional sales directors or myself. Uh, when it comes to who is working with the salespeople, um, it ongoing training is <laughs> is incredibly important as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, getting getting that base and that foundation of training in the first couple of weeks at headquarters and and the experiential learning is incredible. But there's always a a little bit of of continued learning that these salespeople are are just going to get into a club and go, whoa, this is even. This is even beyond, you know, what we were talking about in training for two weeks. It, it's naturally just going to happen. I can, I can speak to that personally. <laughs> um, so uh, to be honest, we kind of take a lot of aspects of the training that we have already done and continue that. Um, it, it can be challenging because a lot of the, the management that we have is remote. Um, we're not always there on site with the salespeople. But the first thing that we do when a salesperson goes from training to a club is we always have one of our managers there at the club for on-site training. That is incredibly imperative. Uh, just getting that new salesperson comfortable um, in the position and comfortable at the club and, and working with the management at the club and, and ownership as well is, is incredibly important. Um, so we start with that. We start with on-site training. We work through mock tours at the club over and over and over and over again. Um, so that they are comfortable with their touring process, that that's a huge deal. And that's something that they can't 100% get in the initial part of training. Um, we also, both within on-site training and then outside of that and, and continuing, is, is also listening in on calls, whether we hop on a Zoom with them and they just rip through a call block for an hour and we are just listening to their conversations after every conversation. Going back to what Adam was saying, hey, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? Um, these these are the the things that I have for you that I can pass along to help you in your process as well. Um, and then just continued conversations with them is is incredibly important. And working through our CRM system as well helps us manage each one of these membership sales directors as as well as we possibly can um, because it. It's very important to be able to see what what are the emails that they're sending? What is their sales process? And we can see that very quickly through our CRM system. Um, it, biggest thing, continue communication, especially right off the bat with salespeople, working through a lot of the same processes that they have already worked through at the start of training um, and just getting them, again, more of that experiential training and coaching as they can possibly have. Uh, it's just going to be that is ideal for everyone. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Adam. No, I just, I, I think, you know, as, as Greg was speaking, I, I think a couple things came to mind is, um, I think that's what I have heard feedback on with my time with Capstone is what people like most about working for this company. It's support, right? Like we have an entire team, both at Greg's level of, you know, uh, leaders and managers and also just other folks that are doing the position at the same time, right? You are and interacting with the same challenges, uh, pros and cons. Um, we have a great support network of both, again, leaders and also other employees, other sales directors. I think that's one thing. And Greg also mentioned that, right, we do have these oversight protocols and it's not in an effort to micromanage. It's an effort to understand that, again, if I equate it back to golf, right? And Kyle, I'm sure you could find an equation here with football, but like if you're on the driving range, your swing typically feels the best, right? And I equate the driving range to training. Like you have structure, it's reps, you're going to get into a flow. The further out you get onto the golf course and then the further out you get into a tournament, right? It gets harder and harder to maintain your swing, your composure. There's more stuff going on, more variables. So just continued oversight from our leadership team just provides, again, a little bit more structure um, and support as people get out into the field and face way more variables than you can recreate, you know, in a structured training environment. Yeah. And kind of from what you guys have said, it, it's really layered. And I, I'm sure that goes a long way to the success of the sales uh, director. They come in, they train with Adam in the building. They spend some time doing mock tours and mock phone calls. Then they get additional training on site when they first get to a club, and then they get ongoing training through virtual or anything else like that. So that's a it's it's really a good support system. And Adam kind of jumped the gun on me because my next question was going to be, you know, how do we support those salespeople? I think you wrapped it up in a pretty good bow there, Greg. Do you have anything else to add about how we support uh, salespeople out in the field? No, I, I think between myself <laughs> and Adam, I, I think we uh, I think we, we touch on just about everything. Yeah, no doubt. Say, you know, there there is a, a little bit extra, and and that is the client relations side of things. Um, you know, as as a manager of of that client or that club, you're working closely with the salesperson, but you are also working closely with the general manager and the staff on site at the club. Um, and that continued oversight with them, and and that continued communication. <laughs> is is huge um and that support of the salesperson is is huge as well um so that's something where what we do you know we come in we we staff a salesperson at a club in the membership sales director role um you know they are an employee of of capstone um but we are still working closely and everybody is working closely together right it's it's a full team effort it's a full partnership so that communication has to has to include everybody. Um, and that just continued client relations is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other piece you guys have talked about a little bit is feedback. So my question is, you know, how do you gather feedback from sales directors regarding the effectiveness of training programs? And then how do you use this feedback to continuously improve and kind of refine that training approach? You know, like, I'm sure everything's not static. I'm sure we continue to grow this training process. Mm -hmm. So how do we use feedback to do those two things? Yeah, I ask, um, it's an anonymous survey that I'll send out at two points. Um, one of which is right after they leave training. Um, hey, give me some feedback on pros, you know, strengths of the program, weaknesses of the program, areas that you think would be helpful for you that you didn't quite get or that you did receive. So I asked them very directly for feedback as honestly as they can provide it, right? And I know there is a dynamic there of, um, you know, employer, employee, but any feedback we can receive is genu genuinely meant to serve the program and the company and future employees. And then I'll send a second one out once they've been in the, the position for a couple months. So now that you've been in the position, now that you have a little bit more understanding of it, what are some things that you'd really like to see in training? What were some things in training that really provided you the experience you needed? So I try to get them in a couple different ways and different times to give me feedback. And then I'd imagine Greg and the, the leadership team on there and probably ask similar questions as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you have to have that continued communication with them. And uh, I think we're all attacking it in the <clears throat> same way between yourself, Adam and, and myself or, or the other managers of, of all the membership sales directors across the board. Um, again, it's the continued communication, but it's, it's getting feedback from them on, what what are they struggling with? What what do they feel like they're not quite a hundred percent on? And 
it, you know, it doesn't just go one way, right? They have to communicate that to us and, and we have to communicate those things to them. Um, so that's, that's huge when it comes down to the process, but, um, it's, it, it, it's a fun thing to see when you're kind of building this out and, um, you're asking those questions and that feedback is, is going both ways. Yeah. So let's talk about measuring that success. All right. We, you know, what metrics or KPIs do we use to measure the success of training programs for membership sales directors? You know, how, how do we track that? How do you track progress and performance from training to being a successful membership director? Yeah, that's a good question. So <laughs> some of it's subjective in terms of what they want to set out to succeed and achieve. Same for us. And then there are metrics throughout the process. So um, again, when they get on site, I ask them, there's a pre-questionnaire, right? A pre-assessment. Um, and we just talked about the post-assessment. So the pre is, here's some questions before you even get into training. Do you know these answers, right? What is this? What is, how does this pertain? What would you do in this situation? And then what are three goals you want to achieve throughout training? What are some things that you, we can quantify that will help you better understand this position? So then, right, we get into it, we start going over the basics, and then as they start to get more hands-on, right, they start making these phone calls, they have to set up a tour for that, for that sales director on, in that property, right? So they need to show us both they can learn, they're engaged, um, they're growing, and they can actually do the program and the skills, um, again, in a safe environment, right? So yeah. that's one of the major metrics to show us that you can actually get somebody on the phone, um, have a high-level conversation, um, and set up a tour. That's one of the main ones before they leave training that we want to make sure they can they can understand. Yeah, Greg, any more input on that one? No, I, I would just say on uh, on my side of things, um, I think that's very important. What what Adam said, having having those indicators and working them through that experiential side of things, and w we want to see them able to schedule tours. We want to see them able <laughs> to. Um, to have good conversations with prospects and we want to see them get better, right? Cause nobody is starting at a 10 out of 10. Um, I myself probably start at like a two out of 10. <laughs> um, that's being generous, uh, but, but you get better, right? Because yeah. you're practicing and you have that ongoing training, you have that ongoing coaching. Um, so even if you're starting at, <laughs> at a low percentage, we want to see you getting better and we want to see you putting in the effort. Um, that's, that's part of what I want to see once they get to a club as well. Obviously we have, we have our monthly budgets that salespeople need to hit. We have our annual budgets that salespeople need to hit. We have our lead generation and marketing calendars and, and goals through that, <laughs> that salespeople also need to hit. So we, we track things very closely through our CRM system. And we're always looking at that and saying, all right, what else do we need to do? What can we add in? What has been successful? What hasn't been successful? Um, so it's, it's just an ongoing thing, uh, <laughs> to be honest. And, and I think part of it is something that, again, isn't, isn't as tangible as, as some things. Um, but a big part of it is just the, the sales process as a whole. Everyone goes into a club with maybe a, a little bit of a different sales process, but we try to ingrain kind of one, one foundational sales process into them. And, and you will see as new salespeople, new membership sales directors start at a club, you will see, you know, month one, okay, their sales process is, is pretty solid. Um, and then you'll see two months in, three months in, oh, this is, they're exactly where they need to be, right? Because that comfortability is there with the club, with the salesperson. Um, so there are there are some specific metrics like budgets, um, like uh, leads, new leads that are coming in. You you need to gather those new leads, right? But there are also just some just looking at it um, objectively and working with each individual person, and um, everybody's going to be a little bit different. So you need to be able to look at at all those factors um, as as you continue on. Yeah. So gentlemen, I got two questions left. So we'll mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. cue that up. So the first one is just about culture. You know, how do you guys instill you know, good culture and, and kind of that feeling for sales reps that really live all throughout the country. You know, how are you able to kind of keep that cohesiveness and, and make them feel like they're still a part of a unit mm -hmm. it can be tough for sales guys. Sometimes they're out there, they, they're kind of on their own. I, I get that they have multiple check-ins and zooms and all this, but mm -hmm. you know, from a day-to-day -day aspect, they don't really see a lot of capstone employees. So how do you keep that culture and kind of that, 
that vibe and all that feeling kind of in a positive direction. Yeah, Greg, I'll start and kind of just cover the training component. Then obviously you can, once they're out in the field, but that's what I love about the way our training is structured is it's at our headquarters, right? So um, from the moment they get here, they're interacting with myself, um, Tyler, who's um, VP of partnership. So they get to interact with a lot of our executive team. Um, and I think that's so tremendous that they get to have these conversations with these folks that have been in this position in this company for many, many years. And I think that starts to establish that rapport and connection to Capstone. Um, and then right then they move out to the field. But we really try early on to have those connections made. And we have two clubs here in the area that, again, as they're training, they're going to go shadow those folks, right? They're going to get to see this job done on a daily basis. And what's neat is if they go day, like two days back to back, when we come back and debrief, the days are completely different, right? So the yeah. flow of the day, the amount of calls, the tours, the client relations component, whatever it is, is completely different. So they get to see it and interact with that salesperson, um, thereby you know tying them more into Capstone. Um, we also have a newsletter, right? We send this out to try to keep these members of our team um, connected with updates, new clubs coming on, new employees coming on, some highlights and achievements of folks within the, the company. So from the very beginning, we're always trying to tie these new employees into our team, our family, our support system. So they feel more supported, right? To your point, once they are out on their own. And then that's when Greg's team takes over. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the way I look at it is what we try to provide for every single person is is a full team approach, right? If, if I'm working directly with a salesperson, it's not just me, right? They have a group of 30 other salespeople behind them that they can reach out to. They can talk to on a regular basis that will continue to support them. Um, that will continue to mentor them as well. Um, you know, we have salespeople that have been doing this for five, 10, 15 years that have just a, a wealth of knowledge um, that can just continue to support and mentor, especially our, um, our, our newer salespeople that are getting into the role. Um, so that in itself is, is a huge part of it. Um, we do have, we have weekly calls with all of our salespeople. We also have small groups as well. So our regional sales directors will break into small groups um, and just get everybody talking, get everybody, you know, having a good time and having good conversations, um, both just about life, but also about work uh, as well, which obviously is very important. Um, uh, other things that, that we do internally, uh, we have both kind of a, a large retreat that involves uh, everybody within the company. We get together either in the mountains somewhere or by a lake somewhere, or by the beach somewhere uh, for, you know, two, three, four days or so. Um, and we relax, we talk to each other, we get to know each other, um, you know, get into personal conversations, get into work conversations, get into ongoing training. It's It's a little bit of a mix of everything, but we always see coming out of that just a, a, a re-energized team. Um, and, and that's really fun and exciting to see. Um, and, and also regional retreats. You know, there are a lot of our salespeople that are pretty close to each other within maybe, a, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe two hours. Um, and holding those regional retreats with kind of those smaller groups continues just to create that cohesiveness that we have throughout the team. Um, so it's, it's fun to kind of go through step by step, but um, there's there's touch points everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and and those things are all really important because, like I said, people can feel isolated sometimes, and that ability to really connect with a bigger group, like you said, which is the strength of Capstone is the the entire company, not just one salesperson, not just one executive of those things. So, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to leave off with this last question. Um, it seems like the training program is very thorough. If I'm a club out there and I don't need staffing, is there a way to get my membership sales director trained by Capstone? Is there a possibility for that to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. And that's something we've worked really hard to develop over the last number of years is how can we reach more membership sales directors in the industry, right? Um, because we've seen tremendous success with how we've done it, our way of recruiting, hiring, training, placing, management, right? But that's not a good fit for everybody. That's not a great fit for every club. And if you've got a staff member who's in this position and they're working hard and they want to improve and you as, let's say, the general manager want to see that improvement and be supportive of that, we have an option for you, right? It's called Drive. It's our online training platform. 
it allows our salespeople and our information that we go through in our training program to connect with your on-site membership sales director. It gives you access to seminars, our modules, some of our leadership team, and really just information and support that helps you better understand your own process, where you want to take it, and our CRM system to help you stay organized um, and lead to success. So I, there is an option. I think it's a great option for a lot of folks. If full staffing or capstone coming on board isn't a great option for you, we have a more supplemental um, remote option in terms of training. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal there. All right, gentlemen, I think that's the end of us chatting about training day. Do you guys have any closing words? No, that was great. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for bringing us together. <laughs> yeah. well, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Thank you guys for coming on. If you have any more questions, please visit our website at capstone-hospitality.com. You can answer any questions there or get any questions answered by us. If you're interested in drive, which what Adam was just talking about, that is capstone-hospitality.com backslash, sorry, backslash drive dash info. So a little bit there. We'll also put that in the link here on the YouTube link. If you got any more questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Gentlemen, thanks again for coming on today. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.